Today we're going to use VR to do some 3D modeling, in this case Gravity Sketch, and then we're going to send that 3D model over to Spark AR, where we're going to create a selfie filter with the flower crown that we create. And it's going to be really easy to model in 3D because VR makes it easy, you can just kind of paint it with your hands. And in the end we'll have a selfie filter that looks like this, and we can publish it to Facebook or Instagram. So I've just opened up Aero Studio, and in Spark you have all of these different default scenes that can be used to create your next effect. In this case we want a head decoration effect, so let's open up that default scene. You're automatically going to get a video, and this person's moving around so you can see how it's working at different angles. If you want to see how it's working on different people, just click video, and you can switch the individual here. Or you can switch to the webcam. Um, but this is uh, a 3D tracked object in the scene. And um, as I move my head around, the null moves as well. And you can parent the 3D object to this. Now what we need to draw over is that head occluder mesh. So this face occluder mesh right here can be found on the Spark website. Now if you go to Spark Assets, you can see that there's a face mesh and then this gray thing behind it is the occluder mesh. What we really need is that occluder mesh because we need the whole head to draw over that. So we can download the face reference assets here. Once you have them unzipped, go to landing pad so we can drop them into Gravity Sketch. I've already made a folder here called Flower Crown. And now if I go to the desktop and open up the face reference face assets folder in mesh, there's a head occluder 3D object. That's the one we need. And there it is. And in Gravity Sketch, if you click it, um, you can actually view it. So this is what we're going to be looking at once we're in VR. And we can just draw right on top of this. So let's go into VR. So here's the flower crown we're going to be making. It's just the same few flowers duplicated around. We're going to go into prefabs and open up a custom prefab. And I made a folder, so open that head occluder object and you can just grab it and put it in the scene like that. Um, but if you click it, then you get a gizmo so you can place it. And in this case, I put it in the meters, but I still haven't figured out the exact right scale to bring it over into Spark, so we'll, we'll see that later. So now I'm just going into the stroke tool in point mode and I'm gonna draw a headband that goes across the forehead. And then all you have to do is mirror it to the other side. And I flattened it out a little bit and I'm making it a tan color. Then I make a single stroke that I can use to kind of indicate twine or something. I darkened it, duplicated it around, and mirrored that across the entire head. Now in radial symmetry, I'm lining up the symmetry on the y-axis by partially pressing the left trigger. And then I'm going into point mode and drawing out a flower shape. And I turn off mirror because it's not needed. Then I can go into edit mode and just adjust the size of each of these points by going left and right on the analog stick. And you can also make them go closer and further from the points by going up and down. Then I flatten it out in edit mode and further adjusted it. And that's pretty much it. You've got a simple flower. Next I create a stem with the point tool just drawing a line downward and making it green. And then I duplicate it, move it up, and make it red to have a different flower. With a few adjustments, I make this flower look different from the other flower as well. I duplicate it a third time and bring it up and do that again. And this time, the leaves are wider and flatter. I'm making a hibiscus flower. And so from the center, I don't know what you call these, but I'm gonna make a couple of like flower antenna. And I turn off a mirror, so there's only two of them. And then I just grab the points on those and change the size and scale till they look more appealing. The hibiscus flower actually changes color constantly. And whatever color it is when it falls off the tree, it'll, it'll stay like that. So I'm scaling the whole thing up and just putting it on the stem there because it's more of a centerpiece flower. So it's going to be bigger than the other plumerias. Next, I want to make a leaf or a grass shape. You only really need three points with the point tool to do that. So I draw those and then flatten it out in the edit settings for the line. And then with each of those points, I just adjust their size. I make the ones on the end much smaller and the ones in the middle larger by going left and right in the analog stick. With that shape, I can just duplicate it three times. I like groups of three for leaves. I feel like it looks appealing. Then I'm gonna duplicate that whole thing and then move it up and similar to the flowers, just add some variation to make it look different. These leaves are gonna be a little fatter. And I'll do a third variant where the leaves are thinner 
and more grass-like. Now we have six elements that make a palette for us to just duplicate these across the headband. And I grouped each one individually by pressing the purple button with them selected so it's a little easier to grab them without accidentally just grabbing one part. Now I'm duplicating them all over in different sections, adding a little bit of asymmetry, making sure it's not too consistent. And then I put the grass pieces all over the head as well. And it's really easy to place these with a kind of an organic feel because you're placing them by hand. Unless you go out of your way to place them with precision, it's gonna feel organic automatically in VR. Now I'm just turning the layer off and deleting everything that I don't need. So I have just the headband for exporting it. And I'm gonna go into save and I'm gonna to go to export. And with these export settings and with uh, double sided on, putting my units in meters, trying to match that up. It actually didn't end up matching in Spark, but we can, we can adjust it by hand anyway. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and export it. Okay, once again, we're back in AR Studio Spark. In Spark, we're gonna go into that head decoration scene. And inside of here, we're gonna import our flower crown. So I'm gonna go into folders, grab it, and then just drag it into the scene. So it's looking really big, which means we didn't nail the correct scale and units. And so I'm gonna have to play around with that to figure that out, but you can move this object. So if you click on the main flower crown group here, you can see that all of the individual pieces are available. And then with this gizmo, you can just move it into place. E pulls up the move gizmo, R is rotate, and T pulls up scale. So now I'm gonna scale this down and then I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees. Over on the right side, we can see what the exact rotation is. So with this paused, I just dragged it inside of the drag here group, and now I'm going to go into head occluder and switch it from occlusion material to something that we can see. And we can see that that face occluder is making this invisible here. So I'm just gonna turn that off. And now we can see where that head occluder is. I'm gonna click the flower crown main group and then move this down and move it forward till it's in the right position. And now we can click on the head occluder and switch it back to to occlusion material and hit play. Switch it to a different person to see how it's looking. Really hard to get it right for all situations. Seems like I made the occluder a little bit wide. I'm gonna make that smaller. Okay, now if you wanna add further effects, such as makeup or face distortion, uh, one quick way to do that is by going to add asset here and search AR library. And a block is like another AR studio scene, or another spark scene that you can open up and edit that is referenced in the scene that you're in. So if I drag that into here, I've got all these settings for my uh, adjustments. We can make the eyes big. Um, we can play with the scale of anything. And uh, it's a quick and easy way to get an effect. I'm just make, making the eyes a little bit bigger and we'll leave it at that. And let's add a makeup filter as well. Let's go back into add asset, go into the AR library, and then in blocks, add the makeup one as well. So this one's giving me a little warning and that warning says we need to open the block to change it to the current 2D coordinate system. All that means is you open it by double clicking it. And once that's open here, hit okay, change now, save it and close it. That's all you gotta do. It just updates it to the latest. Now if I drag that in the scene, got a makeup effect. We can make that whatever color we like. And one thing to help, cause this really doesn't look all that appealing by default, is um, make things really light in terms of their usage. So you can, you can go to the opacity of the eyeliner, for example, and just turn that real low in the eyeshadow, real low. And the same thing with the lip opacity, just a subtle, effect and the eyelashes as well. I actually think it looks best if you turn eyeliner and the eyeshadow completely off, but play around with it and see what you like. And there you have it. You've got a selfie filter that can be published to Instagram or Facebook right here natively in this program. And we built it in VR. So we're using VR to create AR content and it was pretty quick and easy to do. Um, you could definitely take some more effects, add sparkles, uh, make a top hat, whatever you feel like. Um, it's a pretty fun workflow. Uh, so try it out and let me know what you think. All right, thanks for checking this out. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot more of this kind of stuff. I'm up leveling the stream, I'm getting new equipment. Um, if you have any ideas for stuff you'd like me to show, uh, just let me know. I'm mostly doing VR creative. And uh, if you have any questions about this particular workflow, just leave a comment and I'll be in there answering questions. Thanks a lot.